Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, from the just when you think you've seen it all category, along comes this, right? You know when you're watching a fight and a mouthpiece falls to the canvas and the action is stopped, right? So that fighter's mouthpiece can be put back in place. Well, on gamblersadvisory.com right now, I have a link to a Toronto Sun article where a fight is stopped because, and I'm serious here, a fighter's cell phone falls to the canvas, right? They stop the fight, they give the cell phone to the corner, then they allow the action to continue. Apparently this fighter was thinking he might have to make some calls during the fight. I'm not kidding, right? Anyway, give it a look. It's at gamblersadvisory.com right now. Let's shift gears, then I'm going to get into the Alexander Povetkin fight. But first, let me say this. You know, years ago, Mike Tyson was going to fight British heavyweight champion uh, Julius Francis, right? And when he got to the United Kingdom, Tyson, like Ali and Zaire, understood that he needed to connect with fans. Right, that there was a boxing culture in the United Kingdom that he needed to acknowledge and embrace. So Tyson, in one of his best moments, decided to walk the streets of London or wherever he was. Right, and as he walked the streets, thousands of people converged on him. Right, stopping traffic. Right? There was a crowd on the street. Here was Mike Tyson walking down the streets of the United Kingdom. It was a powerful moment, right? Very powerful. Now, Carl Frotch is calling out Andre Ward, only he has a stipulation. He wants Andre Ward to fight him in the United Kingdom, right? Now, let me say this. This is a spectacular opportunity for Andre Ward. Spectacular. Understand that the first time I heard of Carl Froch was when he was a young fighter, relatively unknown. Yet he was calling out Joe Calzaghe, the reigning super middleweight champion, right, who's a hero in Wales and throughout much of the United Kingdom. Right, Calzaghe, quite frankly, is one of the best fighters of the last, oh, 30 years. Calzaghe retired unbeaten. Now, at the time, young Carl Frotch was calling out Calzaghe. Calzaghe was toward the tail end of his career, and Calzaghe had unfinished business. Right, guys named Bernard Hopkins and Roy Jones, who he wanted to fight, right, because Calzaghe wanted to make sure that by the time he ended his career, he had fought the guys who were considered to be spectacular during his era, right? Every fighter wants to be the king of his era. So he didn't fight Carl Froch, and Carl Froch, young guy at the time, accused Calzaghe of ducking him, right? Well, let me just say, Carl Froch and Joe Calzaghe are not the best of friends. Understand, they represent two different eras of a super middleweight division, right? Dare I say, I believe the United Kingdom is really separated into two different camps. There's the camp that believes Joe Calzaghe is a saint. Then there's the camp that believes that Carl Froch is the man, right? To the Andre Ward camp, if I were Andre, I would seriously, just for, doesn't even have to be box office, just for spiritual reasons, right? Boxing's your craft. You want to connect with fans, right? You understand the significance. Carl Froch is your mandatory, right? Um, Joe Calzaghe, quite frankly, great fighter, 
um, has been involved in helping other fighters like Macamarnelli and some others, Nathan Cleverly, right? If I were Andre Ward, I would go to the United Kingdom, but I would do what Mike Tyson did. I would actually spend some time early, right, meeting with the Calzaghe camp, right, embracing the history of the super middleweight division in the United Kingdom, right? Let me add, too, a good positive side note, apart from meeting a great champ and comparing notes, right? At one point, Calzaghe actually said he'd only come back for one fighter, Andre Ward. But you and I know that because Calzaghe and Carl Frotch are really legacy rivals, aren't they? Right? If you close your eyes and say the best British super middleweight fighter of the last 20 years is, many of you are going to pick one of these two names. So given that reality and given that, you know, it'll probably help sell tickets for the fight. Not that the fight wouldn't be a sellout anyway. If I were Andre Ward, I might want to research Mike Tyson's visit, how Tyson carried himself. And I might want to actually add to that meeting a local legend. Make it an entire tour, right, with your entourage. You know, Sugar Ray Robinson used to tour through Europe with his entourage, taking on, you know, fighters, right? Got him in trouble against Randy Turpin. But all I can say is if I'm Andre Ward, maybe fighting Carl Frotch in the United Kingdom isn't as big a revenue maker as fighting him in perhaps maybe Vegas or New York City. But maybe there's some spiritual advantages. Maybe there's some legacy advantages to fighting him in the United Kingdom. Let me point out, too, that back in the day, guys like Ali literally were traveling all around the world, right? Thriller in Manila. Uh, his fight against Foreman in Zaire, right? Countless other cities where Ali fought. If I'm the ward people, I would give Carl Frotch's offer some serious consideration. One man's opinion. All right, let's talk about Alexander Povetkin against Mike Perez. Now, I know I'm a minority voice. I know what I'm about to say doesn't comport with what happened or conventional wisdom. But as I like to say, if you follow the crowd, you're going to follow the crowd into mediocrity. You're trying to beat the casino. You're not trying to be like every other gambler at the casino, right? So let me say this. I thought one of the biggest blown opportunities of the last 10 years was when Alexander Povetkin had an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight title against Vladimir Klitschko. Keep in mind, Povetkin has had a share of the title, but we all know the real champ is Vladimir Klitschko. He had a chance to fight Vladimir Klitschko. I'm telling you right here, he had a terrible night. Terrible night in a fight that, in my opinion, as good as Vladimir is, Povetkin could have won, dare I say, in my opinion, and it's, hell, my video, should have won, but Povetkin inexplicably lost his ability to handle spacing, kept running up to Klitschko and getting clinched. Now, okay, the first three rounds when that happens, you say, all right, maybe he's surprised by Klitschko's strategy. When Klitschko keeps doing it in round six, seven, eight, nine, come on, doesn't there come a time where you say, you know what, if I step to this man this way, he's going to grab me, right? Maybe what I need to do is to fake like I'm going to step into it, right? Maybe when I come in and he reaches around to grab me, maybe I'll then hit him on this side of the face, right? I'll get off shots because I'll know he's not trying to punch me. He's trying to grab me, right? Povetkin, quite frankly, in my opinion, had the worst night of his career in his biggest moment. I know he left the ring thinking, man, what was I doing, right? I know... He spends a lot of his time wondering what he would do in a rematch against Vladimir Klitschko. In my opinion, Povetkin had it right there. Now he's facing Mike Perez. 
Now, I believe Perez is one of boxing's more curious stories. Let me back up a little bit. You know, they claim that the great Ezra Charles was a hellacious knockout puncher. Hellacious, big time. Then he fought a guy and killed a guy in the ring. Right? They claim after that. And keep in mind, Ezra Charles then becomes a heavyweight and beats Joe Lewis. Right? Look up the records. He beats Lewis before Marciano beats Lewis. Right? But they claim that Ezra Charles after that just wasn't the same. That he had a problem finishing opponents. Right? Keep in mind, he's fighting Rocky Marciano. He splits Marciano's nose. And many claim he didn't go in for the kill. Right? Then Marciano catches him and takes him out. Right? My point to you is some guys just aren't the same after a tragedy in the ring. Emil Griffin, they claim he was a power puncher. He kills Benny the Kid Perrette in a fight. After that, Emil Griffin had a problem finishing guys, right? Something clicked off in his mind. Now, you have Mike Perez who fought Magnamed Abdusalamov, right? A lot went wrong. Understand the fight goes the distance, but Salamov afterward has a head injury, right? Ends up in a coma. His career is over. Fortunately, Magnamed is recovering. He's still with us. But his history as a fighter is finished. Now, all I can say is, you know, fighters really don't give interviews where they say, you know what, I'm having psychological issues. Right? They don't say, you know what, because of this fight against Magnamed, I'm haunted by it. I have a hard time finishing fights. But let's look at two fights that Mike Perez has had since that Magnamed fight. Now granted, these are tough opponents. I'm not saying these aren't world-class opponents. But it's curious. Suddenly, Mike Perez's stamina goes out the window. Keep in mind, he's unbeaten at the time. He beats uh, Magnamed. He's unbeaten. He fights Carlos Taco, right? Wins the first half of the fight, it looks like. Fades completely the second half of the fight. I mean, he looked so bad the second half of the fight that I'm convinced guys from the front row could have hopped in the ring, thrown on gloves, and been competitive against the world-class heavyweight. Right? Carlos Taco comes all the way back. That fight officially is ruled a draw. I got to tell you, looking at the film of that fight, I thought Tackham won that fight. Right? Then he fights Brian Jennings. You know what? He jumps out on Brian Jennings. Keep in mind, the winner of this fight is in line to fight Vladimir Klitschko, right? Jennings is Klitschko's next opponent. You know the rest. Mike Perez jumps out on Brian Jennings. He's squarely looking at an opportunity to fight the heavyweight champion of the world down the road, right? Looks like he's by this fight. Then Brian Jennings comes all the way back, right? Did Mike Perez think that these were six-round fights? You know, I have to question Perez's stamina. By the way, I'm not talking about a guy running out of gas in the 12th round. No, I'm talking about a guy looking like he's run out of gas at the end of the sixth round. Right? Now, Povetkin, to me, is underrated. I've long considered Alexander Povetkin to be one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division. I saw a fight. It's online here. Povetkin against Eddie Chambers, where Chambers looks good early, just could not keep up with Alexander Povetkin in the second half of the fight. Faded! Povetkin just physically imposed himself on Eddie Chambers. Keeps him busy, then keeps him too busy. Right? Chambers just fades. Right? I'm looking at the Povetkin-Carlos Takam fight. Now, that's an important fight. To me, that's one of the more important fights in the heavyweight division in the last five years. 
right? Both of those guys are underrated. And I'm just here to tell you that Tackum tries to raise the room temperature. He's busy. He's active. Prevetkin responds. Those guys are duking it out. And Prevetkin is smart. Rather than rush in and get tied up, now post Klitschko. Prevetkin, who seems to be improving every time I see him. Right? Prevetkin is making sure he can't get tied up. Right? He's keeping enough distance. He's unpredictable enough. Right? He takes out Tackum. There's never a moment in that fight where you feel Povetkin's energy level fades. I like Alexander Povetkin over Mike Perez. I think More Perez has demons. I think there's some part of Perez's game, might be conscious, might be subconscious that has him check out after the first halves of fights. I don't see how Mike Perez does well the second half of a fight against Alexander Povetkin. I also feel that life is a learning experience for many of us. And I think Povetkin knows he should have beat Vladimir Klitschko. I think since Klitschko, Povetkin has lifted his game. Right? So to me, I think Povetkin takes this. Right? Mike Perez, let's just say he's never been stopped in a fight. I think there's a chance he can get stopped here. I'm not going to play it that way. I'm just going to say Povetkin to win. That's my play here. But I am expecting Perez to completely fade in the second half of the fight, and I am expecting there to be a time in this fight where it's target practice for Alexander Povetkin. Let me go one step further. Did you know that Perez used to fight with one of boxing's straightest shooters? A guy who gives some of the best interviews in the sport. Right? When I want to get the real inside story, I look up this trainer's interviews. And he's Gennady Golovkin's trainer, Abel Sanchez. Right? Did you know that Sanchez used to train Mike Perez? Did you know that Sanchez was the trainer for the Magnum Ed fight? Right? Now, there's an interview here online where Sanchez talks about how excited Mike Perez was for that fight, right? He's in the locker room beforehand. He's animated. He can't wait to get in the ring. Then, of course, after that Magnum Ed tragedy, the next fight against Carlos Tacco. According to Abel Sanchez, his fighter was lacking in energy before the fight. Looked dead before the fight in the locker room didn't have the spark didn't have the energy this was for a big heavyweight fight then he comes out and gives a flat performance right now I'm not saying severely hurting an opponent in the ring slows down all of us right Sergei Kovalev is the champion he has moved on from his tragic fight Right? Ray Robinson killed a man in the ring. He was able to have a successful career after that. But I'm just here to tell you that there are those fighters who are not the same. Mike Perez hasn't shown me that he's the same. Let me hear from you, right, on any topic I've talked about. Cell phones in the ring. Um, Andre Ward in the United Kingdom, perhaps... Alexander Povetkin, Vladimir Klitschko. I know I'm going to hear from the Klitschko people that Klitschko won that fight going away, right? Fair enough. He did. But look at the clinching and ask yourself, gee, have I ever seen Povetkin look worse? Right? A rematch between those two would be interesting. Let me also hear your thoughts on Mike Perez. By the way, Abel Sanchez is no longer with Mike Perez. I'm not sure who his trainer is. I know he interviewed Robert Garcia, right? You, the gambler, should research the training angle. 
before putting any money on this fight. As for me, I'm going to be reckless. Whoever Mike Perez's trainer is, I'm going with Alexander Povetkin. I think he's an underrated talent. I think the public is being fooled, quite frankly, by really the worst night of his career. That's how I see it. Tell me how you see it. Tell all of us. Leave your comments here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.